Hello everyone, it's Leah Love once again, and I am back for another edition. If you notice, I needed to put a little something light and funny and happy at the beginning of this video because what we're about to see is going to confirm everything that so many of us are experiencing in the month of October, just days before the election day. Um, and to be honest, I have been going through it. I've spoken to you guys about it many times, both on my Instagram account as well as here in YouTube, that I am currently being shadow banned. I'm watching all kinds of nonsense going on on my account, which I can detail later, but I want to spend the bulk of this video uh, with you guys just watching the evidence. Now, this video that I'm about to show you is by Project Veritas, and it was released three months ago. And a lot of it's talking about what happened at the 20 before the 2016 election, but so many accounts, including Donald Trump Jr.'s account, much less many of the greats uh, on Instagram, are now being shadow banned. They're not reaching the people that they would normally reach. And I am having the same experience, but of course, on a much smaller scale. But because my you know, viewers are smaller, but I'm just seeing such weird things. Um, and it's just, it can discourage you sometimes because we're thinking that, oh, we're in America, this is a free country, freedom of speech. But wait until you see the shenanigans and the sheer nonsense and evil that's happening amongst the employees at this company. Don't want to mention that name because they're already shadow banning me on IG. So just watch for yourself. It is worth it. Please share this video. Please let those who are being shadow banned understand that these are words from actual Facebook employees. Oops, I said it. And uh, so this may be get taken down, but I've still got a copy of it, so it is what it is. Because at this point, it's gloves off. And I cannot wait for post-election and when the prosecutors really go after these big tech companies. It's already been announced today that they are planning to uh, file a lawsuit. Um, and I'm excited because it is what it is. They need to be stopped. Uh, this country is going to heck in a handbasket because of the leftists who are taking it upon themselves to push an agenda against Americans. So watch this and let me know what you think in the comments. I'm just appalled. I'm utterly appalled. So let's get to it. simple as you say be brave i am more brave than i am scared of any trouble that anybody could give me for breaking some stupid nda i think the truth is more powerful than any nda to stick up for the voice of the people yeah, it's facebook out of bands. yeah facebook's notorious for it. and they say they don't but yeah. it's clear that people's content don't comes up because it's been defiltered off the queue um it's a very progressive company who's very oh, anti right. maga if you see a conservative post you just get rid of it yes. right i don't give a i'll delete it Zach McElroy came to Project Veritas because of what he saw at his job at Facebook in Tampa, Florida. He saw and filmed evidence of structural and cultural bias inside Facebook discriminating against Republicans and conservatives. McElroy's story raises serious doubts about the under oath testimony of Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg to Congress, where he claimed Facebook has no political bias. What percentage of the flagged posts in the civic harassment queue, as it's called, were Republican conservative? I saw a stark contrast between Republicans versus Democrats in that queue. I saw um, upwards of 75 to 80 percent of the posts in that queue were from Republican pages, politicians, journalists, and pages that supported the president or supported conservatives. What does that tell you about Facebook slash cognizance algorithm here? Well, certainly the algorithm is not human, but it had to be made by a human. So for 75 to 80 percent of the post to be targeting Republicans and conservatives, you can say it was a bot, but somebody had to design that algorithm. So really, 
somebody at Facebook. Some people on Capitol Hill have expressed interest in this uh, ratio that you speak of. Are you willing to potentially testify under oath that, that th three quarters of the posts that you saw flagged were in one political direction? To the best of my knowledge and ability, yes. To me, censorship online is one of the biggest issues facing us in the lead up to the 2020 election. Well, insofar as I was not somebody who was working behind the scenes on policy, but rather as someone who was enforcing policy, I saw everybody around me, and I saw myself, and I did a little bit of comparing, and I thought, you know, there really are not very many conservatives here. And because there are not very many conservatives, I really don't think there are very many people sticking up for the voice of conservatives at a company that handles all the at a company that handles the flow of conversations, basically the, a large portion of the discourse online. And we are essentially in charge of what gets said and what gets stifled. Uh, you mentioned the election, and the can talk a little bit more about your concerns as it pertains to Facebook meddling or being involved in the 2020 election. Well, we know publicly, and as someone even before I started working there, we saw plenty of, we've seen plenty of statements from Mark Zuckerberg uh, publicly about how they don't want to meddle in the election. They want to give everybody a free, you know, a, a platform for everybody to speak freely. But we know that privately they have very different opinions, and we've seen that with the previous Facebook story that you guys published. And I had no doubt that what he said publicly is not what he means to do privately. So let's go to the Trump cartoon, this one here. Is this something that you, you saw at your tenure? Yes, I actually saw this image a lot. Tell me about this. Well, this is an image, I believe it's in an art museum in Portland. They put this up as a bit of a political statement, and Facebook actually reacted to this, at least internally. They gave us a memo saying that this would not violate for violence and incitement or anything else, really. And so we were told to leave this image up, as long as it didn't say, oh, I'm going to actually kill Donald Trump or something like that. So you just told us about this one, where they allowed it to stay up. They think that this cartoon with Elmer Fudd has high severity violence and incitement, but this does not. How do, how do you reconcile that as a Facebook cognizant insider? Well, frankly, I don't. There's no difference between the two. There's no logical reason why the, the determined reaction to those two posts would be different. They should be the same. This is a, was this something that you, you took a screenshot of? Yes, it is. Talk to me about what I'm looking at here with Don Lemon. This was a memo given to moderators in looks like November 2018. They made an exception for content around involving a thing that Don Lemon said on CNN uh, around the time. He said, it says, CNN host Don Lemon recently said white men are, quote, the biggest terror threat in this country, unquote. This is implying that white men are terrorists and so would typically violate this dehumanizing speech, they call it. As this is a newsworthy event, Facebook's content policy scheme is allowing a narrow exception for this content on the platform. Why would they do that? Well, it's hard to say. They would like to say that this was newsworthy, but frankly, if they say that this is newsworthy, that means that they can say anything they want is newsworthy. Well, certainly there is obviously an intention on Facebook's part to have the back of people like CNN and hosts like Don Lemon. Also flagged in the queue were comments from unknown conservatives about Project Veritas videos. And in this case, it was a post regarding the Project Veritas ABC Epstein Amy Robach hot mic tape. Why did the algorithm flag this at all? I don't know why the algorithm would have flagged this. I don't know why any bot would have chosen to select Project Veritas's page 
on Instagram or Facebook to monitor, basically. Mm -hmm. And in this post, it appears to be a post featuring a comments or a comment made by Infidel, who is a verified Instagram uh, political commentator and the typical liberal, who's another Instagram verified commentator. And in this infidel post, it reads, thankfully, there are honorable journalists like Project Veritas willing to hunt for and tell the truth. No matter what, the truth will prevail. Oh, and Epstein didn't kill himself. Yes. Why, why is this being flagged? Well, frankly, there's no reason that this should be flagged. Are these the only posts you saw flagged with Project Veritas, the Amy Robach uh, tapes? I saw that one. I think I may have seen... One other one that I believe I recorded. If I didn't, then I must be mistaken. But yes, I've seen Project Veritas in that queue. Will they flag us more after this expose comes out? I predict they will. Let me run something by you. You know that uh, civic harassment queue that we've been in lately? Yeah. Is it just me or is it like all Republicans in there? It's all Republicans. But a lot of it comes off of Trump's page specific, uh, specifically. Yeah, because I see like a Bernie post and then I'll see like five Trump posts in a row. Yeah, it's, it looks straight Republican related. Like, I love our president. Why, why are we getting this? Steve Grimmett is a content moderator for Facebook in Austin, Texas. Um, it's a very progressive company who's very anti-MAGA. I know that Facebook does have a, a Trump rule where they still allow him on the platform even though he says things that if anyone else said it. And that's, that's the fortunate thing is even if he does say something, if it gets repeated, we can at least get the average job. Mm -hmm. um, but it goes back to our discussion earlier. It's, it's hard when you've got the, the top person in the country. That's his M.O. Um, but, you know, Facebook's done a lot better job of, of at least policing the mimickers and the, and the mockingbirds that come after Trump. I assume your co-workers were deleting a lot of Trump <laughs> Nobody likes Trump in this, I'm sorry. You don't leave any much. go, do you? Like, if you see a conservative post, you just get rid of it. Yes. Right. I don't give no f***s, I'll delete it. Good. And they'll get told to. It's mostly Like, even if it's not, a, even if it's in policy, like, you're deleting that, right? Yeah, I don't give no f***s. It's like one week left. What are they going to do? Like, right. send me to OIP? I don't give a <laughs> You told me that you just whack all the conservative posts and just gone, right? No, honestly, like every time, I, like half the time when I delete people for like, oh, I mean, you should be on a watch list, dude. Yeah. Seriously. You know, Trump supporters like to throw around like Trump derangement syndrome yeah. as like, you know, liberals being crazy. I like to think of it as, as actually, you're the one that has Trump rage syndrome. Yeah. You're losing your goddamn mind as soon as, because they're just like, oh, Trump 2020. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. That sounds a little more deranged to me when you end every argument than that. Like even like hashtag MAGA or hashtag MAGA 2020. It's political state though. Yeah, but not for you. No. Oh no. <laughs> Deleted. Yeah. So it's like, it's like delete, delete any like positive Trump supporters stuff. But if it makes them look bad, me up there, we have to take it down. But I leave it up. Survival. You leave it up. Right. So if you see something that's not supposed to be up, it's probably me. <laughs> so you've deleted just hashtag MAGA. Yeah. Like the post gone. It's, it's common sense. Who else is like you? Like. In the um, office, who else? Who else to proactively delete? Well, I hang out with a lot of people because it's like, yeah. they'll come up to me and they'll be like, "Proofs me," or and then when I do, it's like, "You set yourself up." But there's Marcella. I hang out a lot with her. Uh, there's like other Asian guys that I hang out with. Kevin, who's like the, the midget that I I harass <laughs> about his height. And then there's like Trug, Gabe, Cassie, Jen. Yeah, those are, oh Dante, Skyler, Sh Shania. Those are all like the the yeah, resistors. The people that I hang out. <laughs> yeah, those are, and they all do the same thing as you, content moderator. How, how many of you are, are they take your own stance and say say we're just deleting whatever all the all the Trump posts? There's only probably like sixteen of us. And you guys, like you just delete everyone? Yeah. Yeah. So. Sixteen in the morning. 
Yeah. I don't like believe in pushing like the left agenda. Yeah, yeah. 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 And that's what they How? By allowing a lot of stuff that are very far left to be still on the platform. Like, for example, it, it, like racial stuff. Okay. What? You could call me white trash based on me being white. But I can't. But if you say Asian trash, black trash, brown trash, we got to delete stuff like that. Right. So they, they, they're very, you know, they'll, they'll allow certain things, but not for others where you would think something could be. Um, and so that's just, you know, one example. But And they're very, like, politically. Yeah. It's like you, you could say anything you want except kill mm-hmm. someone on the right. Okay. But, but if, if it's someone on the left, then it's about their race. That's up, up in, like, you know, governmental things. You have to take that down for hate speech. Yeah, I wish she had the MAGA hat on or something. <laughs> You'll clean all of <laughs> Yeah. I would so do that, though. <laughs> if someone wears the MAGA hat, I'm going to do it for yeah. 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 You just have to, like, go hard that day. It's just, like, get into work early. Like, like, I'm on a mission. <laughs> like, make up for the last year. I think Rocky. Oh, really? But if they attack, like, first year, so maybe I'll take that. Yeah, I can take that. Like, what? What like type of attack? say, like, Bernie um, is this and this, and he does all that, and he's just like this, or whatever else, take it down. It's like, think about the amount of impact that you could have if you remove those types of posts. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, the hate, like, once the hateful. Yeah. That's true. I'd rather remove Trump posts than Bernie posts, though, because I feel like people just say, oh, I don't like Bernie or Bernie's a communist. Like, I don't know if that would impact anything, but if, if I, if a Trump post was to come up and it was promoting Trump and I could take that down, then I feel like that would be The actions of the content moderators may not be conclusive evidence of structural bias at Facebook, but it certainly speaks to the anti-conservative culture that McElroy says is pervasive. Well, it's very simple. You've got a formula. You've got a workplace full of mostly liberal-leaning Democrats, leftists, essentially, and they are being put in charge of moderating the entire public discourse. Facebook and Instagram are very large platforms, one of the biggest, and our voices are in the hands of people who are almost entirely left-leaning and not right-leaning or otherwise unbiased. And in speaking with a lot of them, I found that they are not at all shy to exercise their political will in deleting or leaving up content, whether whether or not they're allowed to or whether or not they'll get penalized for it, especially when they've got nothing to lose. That is to say, they're getting laid off. That's hard. <laughs> yeah. What if, I know, I would well, I could put some good ass to sometimes where they like let me slide. No one cares. No one cares. They just delete everything they want. I know a lot of people, you know, always going back to politics, but hey, fighting the good fight. I know a lot of people were taken down. Uh, you know, Trump post stuff. Oh, yes, I knew that too. I was like, you know what? I'm thinking about, I'm thinking, delete like every Donald Trump post I see on the timeline. Yeah. Oh, okay, I thought it was the only one. <laughs> Why not? What do you think? I see this is the main thing. I thought I was the only one doing it, okay? You're doing it? I, was, I, was, I thought I was the only one doing it. But I'll be here. I'll be here. I just feel spiteful. Yeah. Spiteful. <laughs> Revenge, probably. Yeah. Uh, I mean, what you think? They're going to audit you? Who cares? Uh, who knows? Yeah. I don't know. But I just feel like I'm doing something. The problem is, 
problem. I think again, it's globally they they want part of them in this picture, in this global picture. Therefore, Christians are always. You can't believe how much Jesus stuff that has been attacked over and over and over again against Jesus or any type of Christianity. They can, you can blaspheme Jesus as much as you want. Yeah. On Facebook. But if you go against somebody that's wearing, a, you know, one of those Islamic hats and thinking that they're going to blow themselves up, well, that's hate speech. But if there's anything over here in the name of a Christian, like, you know, shares a Bible verse or just, you know, says this, you know, that may appear to go against homosexuality, well, that that's hate speech. That's, you know, this and that. That's not a lot. It's pretty clear that Facebook has a political agenda. And it's also clear that if you're not in line with that, you're less likely to be heard. Do you think if it was like a pro-Trump whistleblower that like they would protect them at the same level? No, right? I think they're very biased with who they protect. At a certain extent, like like the bias. Have like you seen the Twitter, the Twitter shadow banning? So I wonder if this, if you've seen anything oh, at Facebook. Shadow bans. Yeah. Facebook's notorious for it. And they say they don't, but yeah. it's clear that people's content don't come up because it's been defiltered off the queue. Yeah. Right. That's and crazy. <laughs> they're doing something, man. They're just trying to pretend like they're not. Yeah. Well, it, it's definitely being done. I, I don't know if there's any plans to, to make it more, like, to make it a true shadow ban. Like, you post these things, nobody can see your, like, you're not banned, but nobody can see your So A lot of things that we have to look out for are the dog whistles, are the, um, are the, I guess the content coming from places that is a haven for um, white nationalism. So there's a there's an insider watching this program and looking at what you did and working inside of whatever company they're working. Maybe it's Google, maybe it's Facebook, maybe it's you know CNN. What is your message to those people who n have not yet made the decision to do what you've done? I would say you can do it too. I would say it's not as impossible as you think. So there you have it. It's very sobering. And to be honest, it's frightening and chilling. I want to know what you guys think in the comments. If you've not yet seen it before and you've made it all the way to, to this point, you have gotten some great evidence for what's really happening in America. And it's so upsetting that, you know, left-leaning individuals feel like they have the right to censor and to go above and beyond sometimes the directives of their actual company just because they feel that they have a moral right to silence people. And it's just, it's overwhelmingly disappointing and upsetting, but we've got to get the truth out there, you guys. We've got to get the truth out there. Please share this. And if you enjoyed this content, please, I welcome you to subscribe. And I will be here until I get shadow banned on this um, or deplatformed on this, uh, you know, social media platform as well. But I'm going to keep sharing the news. I'm also on Parler, which is P-A-R-L-E-R. -E it's a social media platform that is all about free speech. There's none of this deplatforming and censorship and shadow banning whatsoever. And so I'm working to move my content over there as well while I still remain on uh, my backup page. Uh, and my regular page on Instagram. But I started to do these videos because I could no longer do live videos on my main page uh, because I have been shadow banned and censored. So I have a feeling that there's one of these employees that are just sitting on my account and probably got a list of accounts that they watch and wait uh, in order to ban them. So, you know, it's, it's socialists you know, United States of America, unfortunately, but we can make a change. We can make a difference. So your vote matters. Please vote in person. None of this ballot mess. And then let's wait until this season is over and let's get with these lawsuits. And um, because I have no doubt that Trump has gotten to the end of his rope with this. This is unbearable. I will see you guys the next time. Take care.